Hey guys, thanks for being here. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to take you through the ins and outs of building a knife from scratch out of a piece of AEBL stainless steel. Just making the uh, commute to work from the back door. It's pretty rough, but you know. Uh, yeah, so last, oh, it's been week three of somebody being sick in the family. And then this last, oh, the last week has been me and Sarah, so it's been kind of rough, um, which is part of the reason I haven't put a video up for over a week. Um, but it's also more than that. <clears throat> One of the challenges that I'm faced with is because I am a full-time bladesmith, that's what I do for a living, uh, I'm blessed to be able to do that. Uh, but I, you know, I have to make knives and I have to get orders out the door and um, so adding uh, video production and uh, just actually content that is interesting, that's an added task. Today, um, without further ado, yeah, I'm going to bring you guys along on a uh, stock removal stainless steel knife. And we'll start working on that and uh, it'll be a good time. So thanks for being here. So the first thing we have to start with obviously is the design for the knife. And in stock removal, you're basically grinding or cutting out the shape of the knife and this is actually a knife that I forged from 01 tool steel this last year sold to a guy and he liked it so much that he wants to buy one just like it for a son who lives in a humid damp environment and so he wanted stainless steel just got to transfer that to here So there you have it. Blade is all profiled out and um, there's ways to do this. There's different ways to do this. I've always just freehand ground mine out and uh, it works well for me and it goes quite quickly. Now you might ask why don't I simply forge this blade out or why didn't I forge this blade out? You can forge any steel that that is true however in a high alloy steel the amount of force and pressure in internal movement that takes place is is much um, what's the word much more drastic than your average carbon steels because of the high alloy content now I realize that there are people making stainless steel Damascus and, and getting I guess reasonable results I'm not really familiar with it uh, but <clears throat> it, it uh, it's just not something I've delved into and tried to do I'm, I'm just aware of that uh, using a piece of steel and then heat treating it appropriately without forging it is one of the simplest ways to get good results from that piece of steel. Can you forge it and then do normalizing cycles and that kind of thing? I think so. Uh, normalizing is simply not the same thing when it comes to high alloy content steels. Um, because of the alloy content, they basically air harden. Uh, so the process really isn't the same thing when it comes to stainless steels and uh, I'm just a lot more comfortable 
doing it this way because I know I can get good results out of the steel for this knife. Okay, so we have the holes drilled in the tank for the handle bolts, and uh, from this point, our, our process and, and procedure is going to veer sharply from what you would normally do with a, an average carbon steel blade. It's necessary to heat this steel up to over 1800 degrees and hold it at that temperature for an extended period of time, which is between 10 and 30 minutes, depending on what you go with, in order for the steel to get into the proper state that it needs to be before we quench it. If you don't do this, then you're going to get drastically reduced results from your steel, which sort of negates the point of using the steel in the first place. Um, now, if you heat any piece of steel up to 1800 degrees and hold it at that temperature for an extended period of time, you're gonna get massive amounts of decarburization and, and just ruin the steel. So we have to protect the steel from the environment during this heat treat process. Uh, in industry, uh, different pieces of machinery like a vacuum kiln are commonly used and there, there are others. Uh, but in a small knife shop, um, it's, it's common to use stainless steel foil pouches. And there's, there's high grades of stainless steel that can withstand these high temperatures and maintain that uh, atmospherical integrity to protect the blade. And so that's what, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, and that way we can affect this heat treat process uh, without destroying the steel. Another thing that is necessary is that just as high temperatures are required, low temperatures are also required at the other end. So once we quench this steel, <coughs> it has to be brought down to a much lower temperature to affect the full uh, martensitic conversion or the appropriate amount of martensitic conversion. And so in the case of AEBL, uh, that's an um, a sub-zero quench down to negative 100 degrees or thereabouts. That's the reason for the dry ice that we'll be prepping as we go, but the next step is to go ahead and get these pouched up and we can uh, move on from there. I'll say right now it's advisable to wear gloves when working with the stainless steel foil because it will cut you very easily. Um, in any event, even if you're wearing gloves, the one thing you never want to do is run your finger along a crease as if you're folding a paper airplane. Don't do that. That's the best way to cut yourself with this stuff. And I'll show you how to safely um, get those creases crimped so that they effectively seal out air without cutting yourself. You want to be careful when you're folding this foil to not compromise the, the integrity of it so you don't want to do any Thing that's going to create a hole in it. Um, you don't ever want to run your finger along the edge. That's what I'm talking about. Over here, that's that's fine. On a fold like that, that's okay. I don't push this down all the way. It doesn't need to be crimped down all the way. I don't want to to stress it too much. I like to make my I like to make the foil pouch as close as possible uh, without danger of ripping the side of it with the knife when you put it in. You have to be careful of that. So this is where you want to be super careful. Don't ever run your finger down the edge like that to, to crease this. That's almost a surefire way to cut yourself. You want to flip it over and do it like that, then that's, that's a lot safer. So that's one fold. You need to do at least two folds to get adequate air sealing. Now, now that I've folded it over once and I have a, a folded edge right here, I'm, I'm safe from the foil cutting me. I mean, you can safely do that. Again, it's still advisable to be wearing gloves when you're doing this but just be aware of the edge of the foil. So at this point I have a tube 
um, that I can put the knife in. But before I do that, I like to run down the edge with just these clamps, these vice grip clamps. And that just brings those together very closely, snugly, so that it actually seals the air out. You could use like a little hammer and run down here like this. I don't like to do that. Um, I feel like it's a little too hard on, this, on the foil. So at this point, it's ready to put the knife in and uh, seal the last end. What I like to do before I try to do that is to open it up a little bit instead of just sticking the knife into it when it's uh, closed up like this, it uh, tends to snag the corners of the blade and um, it can actually poke a hole in the foil, which of course defeats the entire purpose. So using something that's um, got more rounded uh, edges to it that's not going to jab into the sides of the foil pouch, just kind of open that up a little bit. Um, and that way you can actually get your uh, the knife blade in there without ruining the, the pouch. Okay, so that's down to the bottom there. And I'm, I'm kind of feeling where the uh, blade's at. It's, not, it's gonna be a little bit of room in there. But I have enough length here to do a double fold again as necessary for good sealing. Some guys put a little piece of paper or something in there, um, and that's to uh, burn off, you know, whatever oxygen is in the pouch still. I've never done that. Don't find it to be necessary. Um, you know, it's such a small amount anyway that It's not going to, especially when the when the blade is um, completely unground, you're not going to have to worry about anything that that tiny amount of oxygen is going to do in there. So I never worry about that and have never had issues with it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and call that part one to our AEBL stainless steel knife series. And uh, we'll get right into the heat treat uh, on the next video and go from there. So I guess this is kind of, I mean, there's, there's a little more technical details and information. Um, so hopefully that helps some people out. And um, yeah, I got a few other things done here, but uh, I'm, I'm not really not feeling that great so at all. So I'm gonna go in and try to feel a little better, get the video edited, that kind of thing. But I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, if you're getting anything out of the videos, you know, uh, subscribe and uh, hit the notifications button. But I uh, appreciate you watching. Have a great day.